and that just mentally wasn't a nice lifestyle, it was depressing and I was just like, no. People generally know what to do, they know they need to start eating a lot, but it's doing it that's a completely different thing. Okay, so probably should do a little bit of context or background. Basically, why I wanted to do this video was because I've been really happy with how the recovery videos that I've been making and kind of like just recovery journey and update progress. I've been so grateful that it's been helping other people because I've noticed people have messaged me saying thank you for, you know, either um, helping me when I was struggling, like tell, saying something I needed to hear or even just people saying you made me realize or like admit to myself, which is the first step to recovering. So it's been something important to me to keep doing. So I just want to keep doing videos that are going to be helpful to other people and promoting something good. So um, a comment I've noticed on a few videos where I've mentioned, you know, I got to a healthier weight. I said progress, I got to 51 kilos, so, stuff like that. Um, I've noticed people comment like, how do you gain weight? And at first I was like, well, that's a very silly question. Like, what do you mean, how do you gain weight? Like, you eat, <laughs> you eat more food. Um, but then I thought about it and I was like, I know, at first I was like, look, I think that's a mental question because you know the answer. It's just like, how do you bring yourself to eat more food? It's like a mental thing. Like, how do you do that mentally? But it is also a physical thing because I remember when I first, I like, I didn't first, it's such a long step to recovering because like admitting or like knowing you need to do something and actually starting to do that are two huge separate steps in themselves. So when I knew I had to do something, but I wasn't doing it, I was kind of just like looking into it. In my head, it wasn't just like, oh, I'll look into how to, you know, heal myself. It was like, I need to do this. Like, how do you gain weight healthily? I looked up things like that. And it was just like things that I know, but I just needed to see it or hear it. Like that's, I think that's a big thing with recovery and why I like making videos. People generally know what to do. They know they need to start eating a lot and listening to their hunger and resting more but it's doing it that's a completely different thing and they need to hear it and I need to hear it and a lot of people other people need to hear it so that's something that I like to do as well as like kind of help with the actually like knowing what to do side as well but anyway so I thought I would share some of the things that I've been doing to gain weight I still am underweight I don't mean badly I'm just like I've always been on the lighter side but I still you know I'm getting there also I just want to add I know um, a lot of people say you shouldn't put numbers and add and like you know weigh yourself or like aim for a weight etc and yes I completely agree but I also see both sides of it and for me I I needed something to like like I don't have the best like body image I guess because I'll think I'm like huge when I'm like tiny I needed just something to look at to know you have to keep going just to push myself otherwise I'll be like I feel like I'm a healthy size now I can't I shouldn't be getting any more like mentally it's more of a mental thing I know how much I weighed when I, I weighed before I had any issues with like anything and I was just like a normal healthy teenager and athlete I know how much I weighed then um, and I know I'm quite a bit under that still now and so that's just like my coach note wants me to get to, she gave me a certain weight before she wants me to do full training. So for me, I like to be able to work towards that. And like, if I weigh myself and I'm like, obviously under it, I'm like, okay, I still have to get up a few kilos. It's something that I remember in my head when I feel like, you know, cause I obviously still have bad days where I feel bad for like eating and I'll be like, no, you need this. Not eating, like I know you have to eat every day, but like eating in a surplus because Sometimes like it feels, you know, it is hard to eat more than you know you are required to maintain a weight Which is just like normal intuitive eating So like if you weren't underweight and you just eat your normal amount for the day When you're underweight and you're actively trying to gain weight and you know you're eating more than your body n Needs at that weight because it's going to put on the weight. It is hard mentally 
So whenever I have trouble with that, I'm like, look, I know I'm not enough kilos on the scales. I know some people might think, how can you be okay with that? But like I, I've explained in other videos why I care so much and why it is important to get healthy. And I, I care about being an athlete. I care about my health and being happy and just so many other things that are so much more important than an eating disorder. And I care more about being alive and I've said before life is to be lived not to be survived and I was mentally so unhealthy when I was at the worst so it's just that's another thing in itself another thing is with BMI so like that's just another thing with numbers and that's just a really general thing because it doesn't really give you an idea of how healthy someone is BMI is just a body mass index it's just a measure of your height and weight and obviously you could be extremely muscular and weigh enough but not have an essential amount of body fat required as a human to be functionally healthy and therefore you're not actually at a healthy weight even though you have a healthy BMI. Okay so for me the lowest I got to, I'm sorry to talk about numbers if this triggers anyone, everybody is a different weight. For example height makes a huge difference, a couple of centimeters makes a very big difference, muscle mass makes a big difference, bone density, everything. So you have to know what's okay for you because I know that 46 kilos can be completely healthy for someone who's a lot shorter than me, a lot less muscular than me. But for me, that's emaciated and not healthy and very under fat. When I say under fat, I mean the essential amount of fat needed for humans. I don't mean, you know, I'm not fat. Like, <laughs> I just mean under the essential amount of fat, which is something that I've had to, is something I've talked about in other recovery videos, but it's something very important in your in life and especially for humans and females in particular basically um the lowest i got to was like 45 kilos i'm 170 centimeters if anybody comments that in the comments like i'm approximately 170 centimeters i say approximately because i'm like 169.8 or something but whatever okay before i had any problem with eating and, and overtraining and losing lots of weight i was around 53 54 kilos i've said this before I hadn't weight trained yet because this is as an athlete, like I was 17, I hadn't done any weight training, I just did like strength training but body weights, not with weights, and I was just doing my usual track training. So I feel like my, I don't know how much weight would have changed, but I know my weight would have changed from the introduction of training as I got older anyway. However, at this time I had an injury and also had an eating disorder, so I never really, I don't really know what my normal weight would be with those changes but at the time that was my normal weight that was just me eating a shit ton of food because that i had a huge appetite and a very fast metabolism i was doing lots of training and just maintaining that weight which is slim and athletic and um anyway so the lowest i got to was like 45 kilos which is like bad like that's not healthy for my size and for my for me like like I did a body fat scan once um, and I had like 8% body fat or something like that and they also said you were like 42 kilos of muscle mass. I don't know if that makes sense but it was a high amount of muscle mass for how much my body weight was because that left a couple of kilos for all my, everything else like bones and everything. <laughs> anyway, so now I'm around 51 and a half kilos so I've gained a I've gained a decent amount from the lowest, but I'm still working on it. Um, so I thought I'd just add that because I'm literally doing a video about how to gain weight. So yeah, I'm just saying how to gain a healthy amount of weight. This is just like a healthy way to gain weight when you need to gain weight, whether you're underweight, you've had restrictive eating, whether you're just trying to gain more muscle, however you want to do it, whether you need to gain weight because you need more power to weight ratio because you want to be a sprinter and you want to be faster or you want to be able to lift more weights and you're a power lifter. However you, whatever situation you're in, this is what I did. Okay, I'm gonna start with the physical things and then go to the mental things. Okay, physical things. This is the easier side of things because I can tell you all these things of how to gain weight, but it's a huge step. It's a big mental barrier that can stop you from actually doing it. So I will go into the mental side. So the easy side of things is basically the only way to gain weight is to eat more calories than your body expends in the day. So your metabolism or how much energy you use each day is determined by a couple of things. First of all, your resting, your, I think it's resting or base or metabolic rate. So your body, even if you're bedridden in a coma, burns calories just to survive for the day, you know, just to keep your heart pumping. Your heart's a muscle, so it's always working. 
just all of your functions that happen in your body, even if you just had the day off and you binge watch Gossip Girl all day, you still will need to have, you know, three meals a day or however many meals you like to eat it. Maybe you just like to have two huge ones or maybe you like to have six small ones. You still need to have a certain amount of calories to maintain your weight because your body is constantly always working. So it's made up of your basal metabolic rate, also your um, active calories. So just how many you burn by the amount of activity you're doing. And for example, like if you do a 5k run, you're burning like 400 calories in it, that in itself, which is another entire meal. And like for someone who's training a lot, like I was doing a 5k run on a day as one of my sessions and I wasn't, you know, eating much and I should really have been eating extra, not, not eating much, you know? So like if I would normally have breakfast, lunch, dinner and a snack, I should have been having, I should have been having breakfast, second breakfast, lunch, dinner and two snacks, depending on where I, when I trained. But anyway, um, so your basal metabolic rate, your, my finger look like Aunt Marge, looks like fat. <laughs> basal metabolic rate, your active calories, how much you're burning in a day. The thermogenic effect of food, I think there was thermogenic. I've researched it before, but it was a while ago and I didn't research it right before this video because I'm just, I didn't think I'd go into this much detail, but anyway, the thermogenic effect of food. So when you eat food, your body basically burns calories to digest it. Some foods, especially fibrous foods, so fruit and veg, take more calories to burn, especially veg and cruciferous veg, I'm pretty sure, take more calories to burn to digest and most like celery apparently i'm pretty sure celery is like negative calories it's like obviously not sure if that's true but it's like if you eat celery your body takes more calories to burn the, it to digest and it then it contains so yeah anyway and, and then also your muscle mass so the more muscular you are the more energy you expend in the day because muscle uses energy to maintain okay so there's a couple of the things that um, determine how much energy you're using in a day. And when people were commenting things like, how do you gain weight? Like, how did you gain weight? How did you do it? What did you do? And I was just like, what? The only way to gain weight is to be in an energy surplus. So have eat more calories than what you burn. So have more energy coming in than going out. That means eating more. So how to eat more calories? Because I've done a lot of research on this and heard other people's stories. And a lot of people say like, you have to go you know, you have to go all in, you have to do no exercise whatsoever and you have to eat like crazy, like that kid from Matilda that ate that cake. You have to be crazy and just like always, always binging. And like, it's, I think it scares people because they're scared into this. You have to be living like the opposite of what you're told and you have to be living in this, you know, really unhealthy state. Obviously for your body at the time when you're in a situation where it needs to be healed it's not technically not unhealthy like to just sit there and binge all day and all for a couple of weeks but you know mentally you don't want to do that i didn't want to do that i didn't want to just lie in bed and sleep all day watch netflix all day and eat junk food all day i don't eat junk food for starters and that just mentally wasn't a nice life that was depressing and i was just like no no i don't want to do that and i get the whole thing about how you need to go all in but I don't really I personally don't think you have to go all in like that you just need to be more relaxed about it you just need to say you look mate look buddy I'm listening to you I'm gonna listen to my hunger I need to eat more and I need to rest more simple as that you know you know about meals like if you are like but I'm listening to my hunger and I'm not hungry but you know you haven't had enough food that day like you know you haven't had a decent three meals and a couple of and snacks if they're not big meals then you know in your heart of hearts that you do need to eat more even if you're not particularly hungry. A lot of times I wasn't hungry and I just like still had a snack after dinner and now it's like a habit. I love having a snack after dinner. But this is the type of things I had. So, okay, so honestly, like it's it's taken me a long time to just get to a weight that's not really underweight for me and it's still not, it's still not like, it's still a little bit underweight for me. So like, I'm still really working on it and I'm not like I'm I'm not trying to say like I'm like the best advice for I have my own struggle with this and I'm not the best advice so it's not like I just I'm gonna say this is what I did do this like I struggled a lot I didn't always do that I did go hungry still sometimes because I'm but I'm learning to overcome that and probably listen to myself but the things I did when I was in a good mindset 
or am in a good mindset. So I only eat whole foods, healthy foods, and I don't eat junk foods, but I just increase the amount of calorically dense whole foods I had. So for example, for breakfast, I always have my oatmeal. I, when I was in a bad mindset, I would not have more than a third of a cup. I don't measure all whey foods, but I do measure my oats just for the quantity of liquid two oats. So when I was in a bad mindset, I would not have more than a third of a cup. And then now it's just normal. When I first started having like half a cup instead of a third of a cup, it was like, I had to push myself. I had to be like, I need to get to my weight goal so I can get back into training. I had to push myself, but um, now it's just like, I couldn't imagine using a third of a cup of oats. That's nothing like breakfast is an important meal of the day. Let's be real. Like I know I, I read a lot about intermittent, fa intermittent fasting and personally, I like to have like a, a 12 hour fast, like from break from dinner to breakfast, just like 12 hours isn't much. It's just like basically a night. So like after dinner, waiting 12 hours to breakfast, like if you finish eating at eight, that's like having breakfast at eight. That's pretty normal. I'm not religious about that. Like if I have a snack really late because I finished training or work really late and then I had some a lecture extremely early in the morning, I'd still eat like, but that usually doesn't happen like that. Like usually it's normal to have at least 12 hours between the next meal. And I just like that to like, you know, digest and not constantly being full, like just like to let your body like kind of reset and like digest everything and not always be digesting food. But I still make sure I have enough calories throughout the day. But that's pretty normal. Intermittent fasting is like when you only eat in like a 16 hour, uh, eight hour window. So you fast for like 16 hours and a lot of people fast till late in the day. And sometimes like I'd read stuff like that and fasting obviously has its benefits and stuff. And a lot of them are to do with weight loss. And you have to remember when you see all of this weight loss stuff thrown at you, that's not applicable to everyone. Like not everybody's overweight and some people are underweight. When I first started recovering, because I follow a lot of like fitness and health people and a lot of people advocating intermittent fasting and weight loss things, it was kind of confusing because I'm seeing all of this stuff about how good this is for you. But I had to remind myself, that's not good for you though. You're an athlete. They're not actually an athlete. They're just like trying to look a certain way or trying to be skinny. You're, you know, underweight. You're, you don't have a period. You have to not listen to them because that's not applicable to you. Their market's different. They're trying to sell their weight loss things to people who are obese or overweight, I think, like whatever. Anyway, you just have to remember. So I get the whole intermittent fasting thing. Maybe you like intermittent fasting and it makes you feel really good. It makes your digestion really good. That just means you're gonna have to eat a shit ton in that eight hour window. One of the main reasons people do intermittent fasting, I get the whole um, having a big break for your digestive system. But the main reason people do it is because your body, you don't get enough calories because it's hard to get enough calories in such a small window. So it forces you to eat less that, and then it also forces you to start because you use up, your body uses up all your carbohydrates as energy. It starts to break down its own fat cells and muscle cells as energy um, because you have not, you're not feeding energy. So the main reason for intermittent fasting for most people is weight loss. So don't intermittent fast is a tip. <laughs> So for breakfast, I would I started having more oats. And then after a while of just doing that, um, it was just normal. Like it wasn't like, do I have more oats? Like it wasn't like a question in my head or something I had to remind myself or encourage myself to do. It was just like, if especially if I'd weighed myself that morning and like sent it to my coach. It, and she was like, keep up the good work or something. I know it might sound silly to some people to be like encouraged to do that. But if you have been through that you'd understand you need to like like I would tell myself like good girl sometimes like how silly that sounds but yeah like even now sometimes I'd be like oh it's like you know I shouldn't have a snack I should just wait even though I'm so hungry like wait to my next meal and I'd be like just have a snack you need it like what are you doing and then I'd be like good on ya to myself like after I had the snack but it's just something that happens but that's just how it is so if I'd weighed myself that morning and I was like 51 kilos and I'd be like Come on, you're getting closer. Like, you need at least a half a cup of oats. You can't have a freaking third of a cup of oats. Anyway, so I increase quantities like that. I know like some people have commented like, cause I love having zucchini oats. Like, oh, um, she's doing this just to bulk up food and um, she's like scared of food and she's just trying to bulk up food and it's volume eating. Okay, yeah, like I get that. I, I kind of was doing that in a way where I was like, I need more, I need to eat more because I'm going to be hungry. So I need to just have low calorie foods. So you have to get rid of the whole low calorie thing. But in saying that, I do 
like having zucchini oats. I like having vegetables in every meal. There's so many benefits from it, you know, fiber, vitamins, nutrients. I still did that, but I just had more oats than before. I still had zucchini in my oats, but I just had a lot more oats. And I used more banana instead of like limiting myself. I used to only allow myself to have like half a small banana. I just like use the whole banana and peanut butter. So I always put nut butters on top. I just put more, like more peanut butter because that has calories in it. And that is what my body needs. So I just did that with most meals. Like, you know, meals where I'm having rice and veggies, a protein, I would just have more rice and adding healthy fats to each meal. So like, obviously I have my peanut butter, avocado with lunch and dinner, stuff like that. I'd also make sure I'd have snacks. Something I did as well was enjoying like healthy like bars. So like, obviously not every bar that's advertised as a health bar isn't he is healthy. Like some of them have like raw cane sugar or like maple syrup. And it's just like, that's just sugar. But a lot of them, so, I, but there are healthy ones. You just read what's in it. And I just picked um, foods that were like whole foods. So, you know, dates, coconut, nuts, etc., cacao powder, and I just had more healthy, healthy bars that I kind of like, so like blue dinosaur bars, like as a treat every now and then, um, protein bars, like I love Googie's protein bars, um, check out my healthy vegan snacks video, so that, with that has a bunch of like healthy foods that I like, and just have more of those type of things. And one of the main things I did and do still, and it's just like, I'm probably always going to do this now because I'm still going to have a huge caloric intake when I'm fully re weight restored because I'll be back fully training then. Um, I, after dinner, I always, always have a snack and I always have lots and lots of nuts. I do snack on nuts throughout the day as well when I'm at home. So that's another thing I did. Before, when I was like in a bad place, I still had nuts. It's like a whole food, but I literally would count out like five almonds. But now I have like probably like 30 at least. And we have like a shelf of all different nuts in our kitchen. And I just would get a bowl and get like a little bit of each nut. And I'd have like nuts and I'd have like a date. Like I'd have like a medjool date with peanut butter in it. I'd get like corn thins. These are just snack ideas. Corn thins, put peanut butter, banana, make a little corn thin sandwich stuff like that just like healthy snacks that are dense in calories um i'd have that and yeah so that's the food oh another way to get more calories is to have smoothies so like a smoothie you can have with a meal and you can just bulk it up with calories you can put in two bananas peanut butter almond milk blend it all up and it's like you can scale that in two seconds but it's a lot of calories um so I try to have smoothies with my meals, like when I'm at home. So that's the food aspect. So the other aspect is obviously going to be exercising. So for me, I was doing a ridiculous amount of training while I wasn't eating enough. So obviously my body was breaking down. I couldn't do my normal events. So I was training for 800. Even then 800 is still an extremely fast paced event. You need to be basically able to be a fast sprinter to do an 800 well. So I wasn't running well in them, but that's the training I was doing, just long stuff. I started doing the middle distance workouts at our training with some of the younger girls because there's a few really good girls in our squad that are like <laughs> national champion, 800 runners, just saying. And yeah, I just, well, my workouts were the same as theirs. And it was hard. I know there's probably people watching this thinking that's not even a hard workout, but whatever. It was a lot of training. Like for what I usually do, like a 400 or a sprinter program, it was like, you know, lots of four, 500, 400, 600 reps in a session. My tempo, I did 15 200s and I was doing them quick and I just got very fit. My VO2 max got to like 62 or three or something. And I was just so fit. My resting heart rate was like bang on 40. I could go for a long time, but I couldn't go fast. And I was like, just like grinding in a bad way. Kind of like, you know, grind. Like what the word feels like I was doing. <sighs> And basically my coach was like, you need to have a break from training. So I stopped going to training. It was the hardest thing ever. After like a couple of days, I got so depressed. So I just kind of came to a conclusion that I would go twice a week to her. And then the other days I went into my own stuff in the gym. But the reason I had to stop was because I was burning too many calories, especially from my heart rate getting up so high. So what I did when I went two days a week with her was short speed stuff to start getting faster again. And short speed, let me tell you, it was short speed. The, the furthest I did at like, sometimes was like 80 meters. Like that's not far and it was like short. And that was the furthest. Like I literally had a session once that was a ladder. It was like 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and back down. I never in my life 
done a session where that was the distances we ran. Like that is so short, but we were like, look, we're just going to work on like acceleration, short speed, because you know, that's not going to burn that many calories as like if you had a high heart rate consistently. And then when I went to the gym, it took me a few weeks of, you know, actually probably trying to like get my heart rate up, not lose my VO2 max. Like I was like, I, I was so scared to like, I don't know. I was scared. It was scary. So I was scared to put on weight. I was scared to not be training and to lose my fitness. I would do harder stuff at first, not hard stuff, but I mean, like I'd go on the stairs for like 15 minutes and try and get my heart rate in my, in my aerobic zone. And then I do a lot of strength stuff, but now, and then I gradually, you know, did the right thing, listened to my body. And I just started to do like a Pilates class one day, or like I'd have a, a rep, like I did have one or two rest days or, um, each week at, when I was like in the in the most restful state, but I also got to the point where when I was going to the gym, it was stuff like not high, not very hard, just like core stuff, like leg raises, push ups, not like and nothing that was like fast paced and high. It was like slow. So I was just doing a lot less training, like two easy days in the track and a couple of easy days in the gym, and and then I'd also just sometimes go to the gym and dedicate like. The entire session to like rehab exercises and spend maybe 20 minutes on like some core stuff basically very toned down i never like went all in in the aspect where i stopped all training and ate badly i just made sure i was eating more food and resting more and listening to my body more and that is how i would say i healthily have gotten to a healthier weight like in the mix there there were some days where i didn't eat enough and there were some days where i did do like a hard session but for the most part, majority of the time, I really push myself to do the right thing. And another thing I really need to add is because I don't want to be someone who's like promoting fear foods. I know a lot of people have fear foods and yeah, heck yeah, I have fear foods. But like the things that I count as fear foods were like foods that I was fine eating before because I've eaten healthy whole foods for a long, long time. And I was never like, I just didn't have... The desire to eat processed junk foods like when i say junk foods i mean like commercial chocolate commercial chips sugary cereals like i don't really count those as fear foods even though i guess they are kind of i counted fear foods for me as foods that i was fine with eating before but i literally was so afraid of when i was in the worst of my eating disorder like foods like i couldn't go out to a restaurant and get thai like you know like a curry with veggies chicken sauce and rice like white rice like I was like not okay with that I was so scared of that like I would only eat brown rice I would only eat I couldn't eat something prepared by someone else I didn't know what was in all of the stuff or even just like a loving earth chocolate or like blue dinosaur bars I wasn't eating and um just so many things that now I'm eating because it's like it doesn't matter Another thing I've done is like I go out with my friends and we'll get food and like enjoy it. Like we'll go to a Thai restaurant. At the end of the day, if I'm doing that every couple of weeks, it does not matter to me. It matters more that I like went out and had fun with my friends, had a good time, lived my life. And so, and I need those foods. Every now and then you need those foods and they're not unhealthy for you. You like having a curry with like veggies and protein and like carbohydrates are necessary to your body. I also think having a balanced diet is necessary to your, to be healthy. So like, for example, if you have fear foods, like, I don't know, maybe you absolutely love Oreos. I know so many people are obsessed with Oreos um, and you're scared of having that. You Like have that, It's you have to be balanced. Like you don't have to have it every day, but like every couple of days you can have an Oreo, you can have like a few Oreos for your snack after dinner and I know fear foods are such a big thing and I'm going to sound like someone who's like, you know, very scared of food by saying I don't have junk food, but like, I just don't have the desire to have that. And I know some people feel so restricted and they're just dreaming of those foods. Like when I like was in a bad place and I was so hungry and I was like going to bed hungry and thinking of food, I kid you not, in the night when I woke up, I would look up this sounds so bad like when i was in the worst day and i woke up hungry in the night instead of like eating i would like just look up food and like watch look at pictures on pinterest the things i looked up were like smoothie bowls like peanut butter oatmeal like 
medjool dates with peanut butter on top, blue dinosaur bars. Like I would just look up things like that I was craving and that was it. Like I didn't ever actually crave. Like, so I had to be able to eat the things that I like, you know, was restricting and scared of, but it wasn't junk food. So like I, but if you have to, you have to heal mentally as well. So if you do have fear foods, incorporate them into your diet. I think, I think incorporating them into your diet is a beneficial thing, but I am someone who does promote eating healthy whole foods just because I've done a lot of research on those foods and like the products in them, like I'm not trying to do it out of a fearful way of like body weight gain and stuff like that. I'm genuinely coming from a perspective of like the additives and stuff like that aren't good for like the chemical balances in our brain and our hormones. Like they, there's some like, like artificial sweeteners and processed foods do release certain hormones in your brain that like you don't want to be releasing in that way. But these are just the things that I did to get to a healthy weight. There's probably more, but I can't really think of anything off the top of my head right now. So um, this video has gone on for super long, so I'm going to make it into a part one and part two. So this was just like physical, what I did to help me get to a healthier weight. So part two, I would make mental. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in part two, hopefully.